Ioannis Papachristou was born in Athens in 1980 to families hailing from Eastern Thrace and the Marmara Islands. He studied philosophy at the University of Patras and the University of Athens and received his PhD in ancient philosophy from Humboldt Universität zu Berlin. He has been a postdoctoral researcher with teaching duties at various universities. Currently, he is working on the research program Sourcebook of Byzantine Philosophy. He studies the history of the area of Propontis and published various articles on Marmara Islands. In 2015, he edited the uh, Anagraphitis Kizico, a description of Kizikos, 1825, and 19th century historical treatise on Artaki and the peninsula of Kizikos. In 2019, he published a traveler's book, The Marble Island, Travels in Marmara Island. 2019-2020, he participated in the research project, The Islands of Marmara, Documentation and Risk Assessment of Architectural Heritage, publishing a bilingual volume on the cultural heritage at risk of the Marmara Islands. He co-administrates the page Marmara Island History and Genealogy on Facebook and runs the website www.periesis.gr, a page presenting his travels in Greece and Turkey. But today, Ioannis will not talk about the Marmara Islands. He, he is talking about his uh, village in Peplos, Evros, in Thrace. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, Gregory. Um, uh, yes, I, I wanted to say that it's uh, a couple of years ago, we wouldn't imagine that all these people doing this research will, research will gather and discuss all these wonderful projects on genealogy. So it's a great honor to participate in the second uh, International Greek Ancestry Conference. Um, uh, so I will be starting. Am I able to uh, share my screen? Yes. Sure. Essential, yeah. So I will be starting with a few general remarks um, about um, the context in which uh, our ebook on Petalos Village belongs, and then I will uh, present you uh, some parts of our work in order to show you how we work, how we deal with our resources, uh, etc. Um, so, usually we are using words that we don't, uh, that we don't uh, really uh, pay attention to their significance. And one of these words is the word place. So, the place where we are born and the places where our lives are intertwined with the lives of our people are a component of identity and the factor connecting us with our roots. Places are part of our genealogy, proof that among the important questions uh, one asks in one's ancestral past is what is the place of birth and place of death of an ancestor. Um, so, um, Historiography and genealogy, it is particularly interesting to note that genealogical research that essentially is a written record often leads to the writing of memoirs, family stories, genealogical lines, novels, even of historical studies. So I would like to stress the fact that in our time, a kind of historiography is revived, that of local historiography, uh, a popular genre of mid 18th century onwards in the Greek historical literature, in connection with the genealogical research. In other words, there is a concern to understand who our ancestors were and how they lived in their place. Now, the ebook about Peplos is born in this context and it tends to be a hybrid of genealogical local historiography. Now, why create an ebook about your village? Uh, I note here two main reasons. First, think of the future generations. An ebook of that kind should be about the past and the present of the village. And for that reason, it will contain also some knowledge about your village that otherwise could have been lost. And second is accessibility. An ebook has the benefit to be easily accessible to countless persons and to be updated as new information comes to light. Um, a, a second basic uh, question to ask is how to create an ebook about your village. Now, imagine what a person would like to know 200 years later. Include in your ebook as different as possible kinds of information 
that may shed light on the history and the genealogy of your village. And then, what is most important above all, create a team. A team, including persons living in the village, offers accessibility to local archives, facilitates interviewing the elders, and of course, accelerates the productivity of the project. Now, our team um, has seven members. Uh, let me present them to you. It is Stavros Danakis. Stavros runs a project to record the shops of the village and put labels on the buildings. Um, and his work is included to our ebook. Uh, then it's Lakis Yanulakis. Lakis is working on the customs of the village and he is the teacher of traditional dances of the Cultural Association of Petlos. Alexandros Karavedos. Alexandros is a civil engineer and he prepares the topographical plan of the village but he is also interested in the presence of Arvanites in Eastern Thrace. Yorgos Bouyouklis. Yorgos works on the history chapter of the ebook and digitizes photographs. Uh, then it's me, uh, who I'm basically working on the historical sources. I digitize uh, archival material and um, I'm, I'm having, let's say, the scientific editing of the book. Uh, then it's Anastasia Sjarvali. Anastasia works on family names, toponyms, and interviews. And Dimitris Tsotanidis. Dimitris is the current president of the community of Peplos and works on the local archives of the village. Now, uh, let me present you the structure of the Peplos ebook. Uh, we have, let's say, uh, five main uh, chapters. Uh, we are planning to present historical events, um, for instance, um, the administration of the village, historical events uh, that go back to the 19th century and, of course, of the 20th century. And uh, a special chapter will be devoted to the exchange of populations because Peplos is actually a village um, that were was made or remade by uh, refugees in 1922 onwards. Uh, then we have a chapter on population where we are planning to use Ottoman censuses and Greek censuses. Uh, then we will present the village. Uh, so uh, there's going to be a topographical plan of Peplos. Uh, there's going to be a description and a list of public buildings of various facilities uh, in the village and a list of toponyms. And then, uh, here comes the genealogical part, uh, we'll have a chapter devoted to families. Uh, the idea is to create a record, uh, a, a list of family names and of family stories. And uh, finally, um, uh, we have a chapter on customs, that is customs, food, songs and dances, and also a presentation of the cultural associations of Petlos. Now, uh, here you see a panoramic view of the village, but where is Pepl Peplos village? Where, where is it located? Peplos is located in Nevros, western Thrace, 43 kilometers northeast from Alexandrupoli and 12 kilometers northeast from Feres, and 5 kilometers away, as you can see in this little uh, part of the map that I have here, 5 kilometers away from Evros River and the borders between Greece and Turkey. Uh, that, that is the Kipi Ipsala border crossing point. Now, um, I will uh, introduce you some general information about the village to see basically how we are working uh, with the material, the historical sources that we have, um, the, the archival material later, and so on. Um, so, the village and its people. The original name of the village was Merhamle or Marhamle. Both spellings appear in transcriptions of Ottoman documents, but it seems that the correct one was Merhamle uh, uh, because this is how we find it mainly uh, in the Bulgarian sources because Bulgarians were, uh, along with uh, Muslim. Uh, Muslims, uh, the first inhabitants of the village, 
So the village initially had Turkish population that back in the 1830s counted around 20 families. And at the moment, no other trace of the existence of the settlement is known before the 19th century. In 1860s, Bulgarian refugees from other villages of Thrace, mainly from Doan, Hisar and Tartajik, uh, were settled uh, to Mehamle. Um, the Bulgarians built also uh, the church uh, of the village, that was Agios Athanasios Church in 1875. Um, now, uh, during the Balkan Wars, the Bulgarian army won the Ottoman army in the Battle of Merhamli. There was a battle that happened around the village uh, in November of 1912. Uh, but a year later, in 1913, the Turks burned the village, including the church. After the Treaty of Serbs in 1920, with which Eastern Thrace passes to the Kingdom of Greece, the Bulgarian population left Mehamle. According to oral testimonies, refugees from Russia, uh, most probably of Pondian origin, arrived in Mehamle even prior to 1922, and they were there perhaps already in 1920, uh, but left after a while. Um, now, the Rum population, that is the Greek Orthodox population of Eastern Thrace and other places of Asia Minor that um, arrived at Merhamli, uh, they arrived in 1922 uh, up to 1924 and after the Treaty of Lausanne, uh, uh, fighting the village deserted. Now, Merhamli was inhabited by Greek Orthodox refugees from villages such as uh, Kuplu, Kabakli, Ibriktepe, and Sultankyoi. All these villages are in the, in the east side of Evros River, uh, not very far from uh, Merhamli, from Peplos. Apart from natives of eastern Thrace, Arvanites of Thrace arrive at Merhamli as well. The roots are traced in the area of Koritsa from the villages uh, Bitkuki and Kipteza, uh, related to populations that were forcibly moved in the mid 18th century and settled in villages such as Ibrikte and Sultakyoi, uh, and then uh, after the exchange of populations, they, they moved um, towards the western side of, um, of Evros River. The 1928 population census of the Kingdom of Greece shows uh, 676 inhabitants at Peplos. Now, the transition from Merhamli to Peplos. Merhamli was renamed Peplos soon after the occupation of Thrace by the Greek army in 1920. The first time the name Peplos is documented is in the census published by the Kingdom of Greece in 1920, and it is striking that the census uh, mentions 530 uh, inhabitants uh, living in the village. Now, that is either a fictitious number or one reflecting the presence of refugees from Russia, as I said earlier. Uh, this is something that remains to be uh, clarified uh, from the sources. Um, and uh, below, uh, you see here the church uh, on the left that it was built by the Bulgarian population of, um, of the village that existed up to 1977. Then, unfortunately, for reasons that are not clear, the um, community of Peplos decided to destroy this church and build the Ayos Dimitrios church that exists until today, that you see in the next photo, uh, three years later in 1980. Um, now, the name Peplos means veil in Greek. And most probably it was chosen, and it was chosen that we know for sure because we have the, um, the FEC, that is the, the newspaper, the official newspaper of the Greek state, um, uh, that was made by the political administration of Thrace based in Andrianopoli at that time. 
in collaboration with Nikolaos Politis, the famous um, researcher of Greek customs. Um, so, and then most probably they decided, to, they choose this name because of the layer of fog that often covers the village. And here I show you uh, a picture from 2016 that I took when I was in the village, um, uh, where you see this uh, slight fog uh, early in the morning. Now, the community of Peplos. Peplos was denounced an autonomous community in 1927 and became the administrative center for five villages around it until 1997 when it was attached to Feres and later in, in 2010 Peplos was attached to Alexandrupoli. Now, um, I'll move on to the topographical plan of Peplos, which is not what you see here. This is just uh, an air photogra photograph. Um, uh, so, what is the necessity of a topographical plan? I mean, we decided to include a topographical plan for three main reasons. The first is to pinpoint extant and non-extant public buildings, like schools, churches, chapels, um, also facilities like the library, the train station, the fountains of the village, and then of course the shops of Peplos. Um, the second reason was to map toponyms inside and outside the village. That would be very um, helpful. So it's it's like having a map in front of you and then the name, uh, the toponyms um, um, on it. And then third, to connect houses with family names. That would be a bit tricky because, as you know, well, the state of owning uh, a house uh, doesn't fit always, uh, you know, genealogy or family names and family lines. Uh, but we hope that finally we are going to make it. Um, um, now, uh, collecting toponyms. I selected toponyms here uh, as a special little chapter to show you, just uh, because many times we uh, we think that uh, toponyms are just names. They are not just names. They are part, a very valuable part of the history of a place, and we collect them by asking the elders on specific places. But usually, and uh, uh, this is very important the more rare ones appear when one is listening to elders discussing with each other. Sometimes when you are posing a question of a specific place, what is the name of this place, you get it, but then they forget other toponyms that come up only in discussions that they have between them. And as you see, we attempt to um, categorize the toponyms of Peplos, so uh, here I show you um, four categories, namely neighborhoods, the plain of Peplos, that is the surrounding area of Peplos, then fountains and wells in the village or outside of the village, and then uh, the riverside. As you understand, the categories may change because every village has a, a, di a different topography uh, surrounding it. So. Um, as you see, uh, in neighborhoods we have Arvanitica, we have Stathmos, we have Milos, we have Ecclesia, we have Paprostidica, um, and then uh, in fountains and wells we have Gyokchas, Tumakui, Ivrisi, Aspri Petra, uh, Ivrisi to Hartaba, to Tsartsara, uh, etc. Then the plain of Peplos, we have Abella, we have Jami, which uh, uh, the mosque of the village done, does not exist. Uh, it was used as, uh, I mean, the, the, the rocks of the, of, of the building were used um, to build other uh, facilities in the village at some point, so it was demolished. Uh, but you see why it's important to have a toponym, because although the, the memory and the sign of, uh, sorry, although the sign any sign of the mosque disappeared completely from the village. There is a toponym reflecting its existence and showing us where it was. 
then we have Mavroclisi, uh, Capsalia, Tacarangiolia, etc. And then in the riverside, we have Diauradas, we have Petalo, we have Trifilonas, we have Paiopori, Cavaques, etc. Now, Peblos' families. Interviewing families, producing history. Gregory said earlier today that family names are not just names, it's history. And interviewing your family, it's producing history. So, some of the main questions that one may raise to uh, family members or to, uh, you know, uh, inhabitants of the community uh, of, of a village uh, could be the following. What do they know about their ancestry? I mean, from which places they came, if, for instance, they, are, they belong to a refugee family? Um, what do they know about the life of their ancestors back there? Uh, with which families are they connected? What do they know about the, their uh, ancestral villages? Uh, what were or are their occupations? Occupations are also important to us because they give information about how and why a family was settled in a place. For instance, at Peplos we have mainly agricultural population. We have um, uh, people that you know are cultivating the land. They are having animals, um, etc. Uh, they are fishermen. They are fishers, I mean, they are fishing in the river of Evros, uh, etc. Uh, so these are some important questions to ask um, your ancestors. And then uh, we have the local archives. Apart from interviews, uh, archives, uh, documents, records, whatever, photographs, um, are very important and what we are trying to do in Peplos is to collect them all or as many as we can uh, and as I say also later uh, to create um, um, to create uh, an accessible uh, database uh, for anyone who would like to uh, see records uh, related to uh, his or her, fa her family. Now, the ebook will contain lists of family names and relative info such as occupation, dates of birth, death, etc., found in the local public and church records. The records found in the community of Petlos cover the period from 1929 uh, with a break of several years because the communal building was burned during the Civil War. So, a lot of uh, archival material was lost, completely lost. Uh, you understand the reasons, of course, um, and they cover a period up to uh, 2010. Uh, now, various types of public records have been found uh, in the community, uh, such as lists of the civilians of Peplos and of villages administratively attached to Peplos as well, uh, books of the Council of Peplos, lists of fundraisers, books of proceedings of the Council, protocols, books of the communal officers, books of decisions of the council, church records, um, um, mainly, um, yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> now, researching local archives. The team will also make an effort to get access to archives related to our village that have been transferred either to Feres or Alexandrupoli. That means to uh, the administrational centers uh, of uh, Peplos, um, such as the school records, uh, and we will try to digitize them. Um, in addition, private archives or archival material will be digitized, which is also very important because, as you all know here, each house um, contains at least one treasure uh, that has to do with genealogy and the history of the place. So, uh, for instance, for us, of great importance for our e-book is the archive of Ioannis Arapidis, grandfather of our team member Anastasia Sjadvali. Arapidis, born in 1935 to refugees from Kipliu village, 
was secretary of the community of Peplos for several years and held different public posts. His memoirs, uh, you see here an example in this slide, uh, personal notes and photographs are an invaluable source for the history of Peplos. Um, now, customs, dances, songs, and foods of Peplos. The ebook will include a chapter on various customs that the refugees from Eastern Thrace continue in Peplos, uh, continue performing in Peplos for different occasions, that is, uh, customs uh, related to Christmas, to Easter, related to weddings. Um, and we will also add a list of songs and dances that the local dance group of the village performs in festivals and uh, celebrations. And the ebook will also offer the recipes of the most characteristic specialties cooked by the inhabitants of the village. Uh, so as to save, let's say, also this kind of uh, intangible uh, cultural heritage. Um, Now, uh, the aims of the team, I mean, we continue collecting and digitizing photographs and documents. Uh, we continue interviewing our family members and other inhabitants of Peplos. Uh, as I said before, uh, and what I think is very, very important is to create an accessible record of family names. I mean, apart from what is going to be included in the ebook. The idea is to have a database with the family names of Peplos that will help, as you understand, to that will help people to create um, or to extend family trees. Uh, and then, of course, we would like to create an accessible record of the graves of the builders. This is something that um, actually I understood its importance here in Istanbul and in Asia Minor in general after my travels. Um, uh, as probably you know, uh, generally uh, graveyards around Asia Minor of uh, Orthodox communities uh, disappeared, of Christian communities, let's say in general, not only Orthodox. So, uh, by uh, creating a list with the details of its grave as we find them today in our village, I think uh, will be a very important uh, record for the future, future generations. Um, then also we engage with the Cultural Association of Peplos and the Women Association of Peplos for the chapter on customs, dances, socks and foods. This is very important. We need the knowledge. We need um, uh, we need uh, you know their their the experience their experience um, of all these years uh, to perform customs, etc. And uh, the plan is to publish the ebook in this year to commemorate the 100 years after the displacement of our ancestors from Eastern Thrace and Asia Minor. Uh, as you know, for us refugees, it's a very important uh, year. Um, and uh, that was all, uh, I think, with um, the presentation of our project. But I would like to close by saying that uh, the Peplos Village ebook will be accessible for free through the Greek Ancestry platform. Uh, we are part of the VHPI. The, um, uh, the village history project uh, of Greek ancestry and uh, we are very happy and honored that we're, our project was accepted by Greek ancestry uh, so uh, later this year you may find our ebook in following the link of uh, Greek ancestry um, I should also mention uh, that the project uh, is the beneficiary of the second VHPI grant by Greek ancestry our grant, that is history books, this is what we asked and we got, and we are very, very grateful uh, to Greek Ancestry and Gregory Kondos for that. Um, so the history books we got uh, about the region of, of Thrace, about the area of Thrace, will be donated uh, after we complete our project um, to
to the public li library of Peppinus. Um, that is all. Here you see uh, uh, the people of our village, uh, some of them with the traditional dresses back from Eastern Trace. Um, and uh, well, uh, you see them dancing, uh, you see them at the schools, you see them crossing Ebro's River with this um, wooden, wooden, um, uh, let's say it's not a boat, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all uh, from me. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ioannis, for a wonderful presentation and an exemplar project. Uh, you saw, you showed us uh, the photos of the Peplos people and you are preserving their memory uh, so well with your project. We wish you best of luck. And uh, yeah, hopefully to have the ebook out in 2022, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.